Hi, I'm Aidy Roberts from In War and Peace. And this is a review on Life Colours Painting Guide Volume 3. I've been waiting for this book for quite some time now. I've finally got my hands on it, so let's take a look inside and see what we've got. So, to start off with, we have the Paper Panzer Leopard. This is from Hobby Boss. It's a VK1602, number 82460 in 135 scale. As with all the other guides, they tell you exactly everything that they're using. And this one has been done by Martin Hughes, who is the founder of Scale War Machines on YouTube. Martin has used acrylic paints from Life Color, Life Color Primer BC04. He chose a mix of dark cockpit UA731 and leather warm shadow UA763. Easy free set MS01 Dunkel Gelb. Temcron's liquid pigments dust set SPG04 and mud set SPG05. Reflecting agent PG110. He's using Airbrush Sparmax 4 Eyewater HPCH. Accessories from Voyager models and Rich models. Also, Mr. Surfacer, Humbrol Marskull, Dela Rowney, Deluxe Models, and Tamiya Masking Tape. So, on to the start of the build. And as you can see, he's saying the diminutive Hobby Boss Cat kit is the heart of this project. It is the Hobby Boss VK1602. From pre shading, right the way through to the actual painting, and down to the weathering. Every single page you turn has different pictures showing you this process, which I believe makes it a notch above the rest when it comes to actual infinitive detail. One of the things that I do really like about this particular guide is the way that each picture individually is put in, in a way that you can actually see what they're doing. The next chapter in this guide really had me mind blown. Laser cut World War II Soviet wooden house. How to paint a wooden house using life colour paints from the skilled hands of Theodosis Giannakardis. You have this perfect looking Russian winter scene with a little farmhouse, T-34 tank, two outback riders, cavalry. So the paint sets used are black rubber shades of black white wood set cs 38 weathered wood cs 20 and colors field blue ua 404 and color german light blau ua 234 and liquid pigments. Pigments are LPW01 and LPW18. How to create this stunning result. The build for this little Russian farmhouse, which is done by step by step scenario. And in this one is 23 separate pictures showing you how each stage is done throughout the 23 pictures, which makes this so easy to follow. I am sure that this will improve your work dramatically. And the last chapter is uh, the World War II German Deutsche Afrika Corps Soldiers Encounter with a Chameleon. How to paint a large scale bust with life colour paints and pigments using airbrush and brushes. And this is from the skilled hands of Christos Catacelos. One of the best things about this guide, the editor, Stelios Demereras. He likes to put things into the book, which is 
about the subjects and some kind of historical uh, references which for me that means so much when I'm looking into buying and, and painting figures or vehicles whatever it is to know something that is of an historical value in this case showing some background history we have three badges uh, that are worn by this particular officer for example in this case the character is a veteran of the european theater but is new ling on the african front he previously seen action he has both the infantry assault badge and the wound badge on his left chest christos then added the second class iron cross ribbon to the tunic to build up the scenario the ribbon is then placed on to the second button of the tunic so let's start looking at this fantastic figure paint work christos initially painted the figure with black primer this was followed with layers of light white coatings of lc01 matte white this gave an all over 3d effect on the bust the head was painted separately in order to work the details more easily but you should be aware that later a large sun helmet will be placed on it you should not overdo the highlights on the forehead the basic flesh is base ua709 plus a touch of flesh second shadow ua712 the base color is dark enough that it also serves as a pre-shade lighter tones will cover it leaving some shadows underneath in the next process christos added some flesh first light ua708 in his base mix to make the highlights the head was covered almost everywhere but specific areas that needed to be more lighter received more passes you can see the shadows underneath especially on the left hand side of his head the hardest thing in figure painting is getting the eyes perfect all i can say is it is a process a slow one and it needs practicing christos allows you to see this with a step by step painting for the eyes the whites of the eyeballs are the light flesh color that was used for the flesh tone highlights a mix of flesh second light ua 707 and flesh first light ua 708 will do the work the iris was painted initially with matte light blue lc09 a drop of red or black with blue added with the tip of a brush can be used as a base if you want a darker result christos remarks that up until now the face looked like a porcelain doll without any life but this can easily be changed with some warm filters liquid pigment red lpw32 was used for some of the very light passes over the face concentrating on the cheeks and nose red umber lpw33 it was used for the darkest effects the base color of the scarf is very dark in order to play the role of the pre-shade once again i used a mixture of brown stone ua781 and dark sandstone ua782 the scarf received some light passes with german gelb brun ua201 and white lc01 while black lc02 was used for the extreme shadows and outlining the tunic this was given a pass with extra dark green ua470 ua470 is part of the Deutsches Africa Corps uniform set number CS58 which looks a little harsh at first but everything will change in the next steps medium olive green 
UA471 was put into the mix in order to smooth the surface leaving an underneath shadow created from the previous stage. The canvas straps have been given a base mix of brownstone UA781 and British uniform yellow tone gear UA4 or 2. The goggles were difficult to paint with the helmet glued onto the head but the result was good enough in the end. The bluish tone was achieved with field blue UA404 plus Dunkel Grau UA611 and a touch of black LC02. Pure field blue UA404 was used for the highlights plus some white LC01 along with field blue 404 the ex for the extreme highlights. The Yemen's chameleon should be assembled and given some test for fitting onto the helmet so it could be glued without any further problems. After when the paint work was complete and avoided any unwanted glue shine on the finished result. For painting the Yemen's chameleon I would suggest basic colours using tones like brownstone and greens. You can use every colour you like. I would choose colours that are similar with the figure colour variation and reference photos of African Yemen's comedians as a guide. As you can clearly see from the pictures, the figure looks superb and Christos is an absolute legend when it comes to figure painting. But it is not just about Christos, it's about all of the contributors and of course the editor. Stelios de Miras because he makes sure that everything that is needed to be able to reproduce the models as you see them in this guide is there in black and white and in colour pictures. If there was to be any criticism from me all I'm going to say is that I wished the guides were that little bit more thicker with more people's work displayed and of course the guide to how to produce that work yourself. I really do love the way that these guides are produced. Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. They are really one of the best guides that I've ever come across and I really do recommend all three of them. I would like to thank Stelius de Miras for all the extra hard work that he doesn't just put into the guide but being able to email him and get high res photos back within a day absolutely superb I would like to thank the airbrush company especially Lisa for all her support and help and giving me a guide to do a review of and I'd also like to say that anybody in the UK who are looking at getting live colour paints then please contact airbrushes.com the airbrush company stock all of the live colour range including the sets that were used in the volume 3 guide also to life colour themselves for all their help and support along this painting guide journey this has been A.D. Roberts from In War and Peace, home of the inspirations. I hope that you've enjoyed this little review on Life Colours um, Painting Guide Volume 3. Please remember to press the like button and make sure you come back to see some more of these videos. So wherever you are, please stay safe. Please re remember we're on Facebook, In War and Peace, you can come and see us there. And happy modelling wherever you are.